I say, Boris, you know, this time of year puts me in a notion for a good vampire movie. Don't you think so? I mean, after all, it's, well, you know, Valentine's Day has passed us, but it's still the month of hearts and lovers and all things, you know, of the dark like that. <laughs> and thinking of a good or a great vampire movie, tonight's feature, I think I will play a Spanish-made a uh, feature called The World of the Vampires. Oh, my dear fiends. Now, this particular one has got a, a little bit of a twist in it. Uh, you know, we know about steaks and we know about garlic and silver bullets and things like that. Right, Boris, to dispatch the vampire? Well, there's a little bit of a twist in this one tonight. I'm not going to tell you until later on down the road, I, after you've seen it for yourself. We'll talk about it at the uh, down the road, as we say. Right, Boris? So let us get started, and I'll turn right around here and put it into the old haunted keyboard. The World of the Vampires, made in 1960, a Spanish-made film made in Mexico. <laughs> now, let us tune into the old haunted TV and get it set. Hmm. Let's turn this oscillator on and. <laughs> I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'll come and get you. Let's
What's that thing? What? That column of smoke in the road up ahead. It's just a man. Why is he standing there? Who knows? He's like a statue. He'd better hurry. He might try to attack us.
Anna, Anna! Anna, Anna! Great Kador, he who rules in the dark world, our master to whom we direct our homage. Upon this slab you saw triumph, your first wife was born. Upon this sacrificial slab there is a new wife for you now. It is written in this cold stone that the great Kador is to complete the Kabbalistic rite and take several high priestesses to his side. This is the knife I hate. By this I died 100 years ago. Murdered by this weapon and the man was called Henry Coleman. Yes, he cut down a human being a century ago, a young man with ambitious schemes that he didn't get to finish completely. And so I was sent to a profound dark world. He sent me to begin as a perpetual lonely wanderer. And since that tragic day, one and then another started to fall under my punishing hand. All those whose name is Coleman, but my task is not completed. Since I've learned that there are still three in that family that I detest. You, your newfound power allows you to look into time and space and see all that is happening. Where are my enemies now? Search well. I found a man who is old. That's right. There are more. I just found two girls. Two pretty girls. One is looking sad. The other one is gay. There are others gathered there. I hear music now. They are the last three of the cursed family we are going to liquidate. Our master Kador orders us to exterminate those three using the full moon as our guide. These are the knights. He committed the crime a hundred years ago, starting next week. Should they not die now, there's a period of waiting. Another one hundred years. They are all destined to die. Nothing can buy their salvation now. For as long as the Colemans are not brought here to reside in this dark world as vampires, there is no way I can start carrying out our intentions to conquer all mankind. You know it is our mission to go forth and bring destruction to humanity and to form a world doting on power and immortality. You are the selected ones and you are to reign on this earth until the end of the endless centuries.
also immortal. I made you like us. And now I would like to ask our distinguished guest, Rudolph Summers, to honor us with some of his music. I'm really not a pianist, you know. You're forgetting when we lived in the capital you played. Right, you are. But the music that I play is very different. I know everyone's dying to hear you. Play something, please. In reality, when I compose music, I have a point of view that is very different. I know you won't understand. Please explain in more detail. One might say that I study music as a form of... Uh, of science and the effects that it produces are related to the people that hear it. I don't understand, do the rest of you? I only said that there are certain vibrations in music that always produce effects that are strange and marvelous too. Some tones madden an animal or cure some person's ills. All people react strangely. Is that true? Yes. There are several vibrations that have not been found as yet. Well, let's hear this exotic music then. Right. But I must warn you, you'll find it ugly. Is that dog howling because he hates the sound? Yes, because a dog's hearing is more sensitive than any human's. He hears at great distances. I played a tune that produced reactions, abnormal ones. That's not possible. You see, music has elements that are warlike, humorous, religious, and certain ones are terrifying. Musical effect is directly related to character. For example, concentrate and tell me what you hear in this. I'd like to hear your opinion now about this music. It certainly is a strange tune, but profound and beautiful, too. I don't know why, but I began to think of our mother's death. And I thought about death, too. I'm sure you did, because they say that in Transylvania, this kind of music is played to make dead men return. <laughs> Please listen to the power that certain note combinations can send out. thought you weren't in town. You were poor, all parties and invitations. We're delighted. It's a real pleasure to have you visit us here at the house. I suppose that all of you here have met our friend, Count Sabote. So handsome and unruffled. Few men are so composed. They say he's tremendously wealthy. It could be, only his house must have been built by his great-grandpa. I'll say. It's down near the graveyard by the old road. He inherited it, didn't he? The expression he has gives me the chills. He seems to be staring at Martha. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think you've met. Count, this is Rudolph Summers, our old friend and companion. Count Sabote, just when you arrived, our friend Rudolph had started to play the piano, and his music is very interesting. Please continue, Rudolph. I'm sure that Count Sabote would like to hear melodies whose powers are so strange. It certainly is fascinating. I wouldn't doubt but that you're quite fond of music, or am I wrong, Count? Why do you say that? I don't know. It, it's only that you have such a faraway look in your eyes that I imagine that you derive a great deal of pleasure from anything artistic. You know, it could be that our ideas are different as to the elements that should be considered artistic. That's all the more reason why you'll like the music Rudolph wrote. Please play, you know you're in demand. Whatever you say, sir. I'll play for you. started to play a melody that he's heard tell could actually awaken the dead in their sepulchres. I don't know why, but I just recall a melody that has certain strange tradition in the, in the Central European countries. It was wrong, excuse me. But that melody awakens certain recollections. An old tragedy in the family. An unfortunate coincidence only. How could Rudolph know about my dear Count? You always did commit clumsy errors, Rudolph. You won't change either. One moment, you... Uh, excuse me, please, sir. But I'd better get home now. I thought I'd present my respects to your family, Mr. Coleman. I hope that we'll meet again, sir, when conditions are, should I say, more favorable. I hope the same thing. I'll accompany you, Count Sabote. Good night, sir. Rudy, why couldn't he stand to listen to that tune? It's completely absurd. I played it because I liked the melody, not because I thought it would upset him. That's what's strange. Why'd he suffer so? The country folk in Transylvania say that this music keeps away the... Uh, oh, that's ridiculous. What is, Rudy? It scares vampires. Don't you realize that these legends and rumors are centuries old in those remote regions? Why are you beginning to look so scared? Don't tell me you really think there are vampires, Martha. No, certainly not. It could be the Count Sabote is a vampire, because his face is so pale, and according to superstition... Will you please, Rudolph? That's not the least bit funny. Why do you say that? I don't know. But just a moment ago, I felt so strange. It's just terrible. You felt strange? Let's hear it. No. Sounds crazy. All right, just forget the whole thing. I'll leave you right here. My carriage is out in the street there. Allow me to offer you my apologies again for what happened tonight. I felt so badly in there. Don't say any more about the situation. I think you recognized my real interest in coming here to your house this evening. You know what I want. No, I don't. It's you. You're all I'm interested in, Leonore. Then why are your hands so cold? Please, you make me uneasy. 
I think I've known you through all eternity somehow. You were lost the day time began. But I'm back for you. You must have known I'd come back because I want you in my house. In your house? Yes. But gaze deeply into my eyes now. What do you find? I find death. Yes. But behind that death, immortality is waiting. A life such as you never knew. At first there is death and then immortality. I found it too. Do you want to come along and be eternally at my side? Or other, through all time and space, Leonore? Yes. Take me along. That is the life that I desire. Take me along. Are you planning on being out here all night long? I don't see Count Sabote. He... he just left. Fleas have better hearing than any elephant, although elephants have enormous ears, as you know. I once saw a couple of fleas dance a waltz. Of course, you have to remember that these were Viennese fleas. <laughs> You'll forgive my niece, please. She's not feeling too well now. <laughs> but why the sudden hush? What did you tell them just now, Rudolph? Nothing much. Just about a couple of Viennese fleas that uh, waltzed just for fun. I had a delightful time. Good night. Thank you. I thoroughly enjoyed myself, Mr. Coleman. And we certainly hope to be able to hear you play again. It'll be a pleasure, sir. A great film so far, eh, my dear fiends? <laughs> right, Boris? <laughs> yes, indeed. It's so tasteful and elegant with the vampires and, well, you know, that count with his wonderful capes and vests and etc. Well, you know, all vampires needs and an, an accoutrements, this, you might say, something superb that would call to their tastes, you know, as a nobleman. I, I hope you've uh, noticed my new vest for tonight and my new jacket. I'll uh, try to uh, I'll try to uh, show it off a little bit later on. But anyway, yes, we, we have gotten a wonderful new outfit for ourselves here, right, Boris? <laughs> I like to keep things up, you know, upbeat. And uh, speaking of up beat. I went back to the old uh, library here at Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum, and pulled out a few tidbits uh, to offer you. We'll see, we'll save that one for last. Let's go with uh, this one here, and it's, uh, here's one. This one's called The Weird Tales, Weird Vampire Tales. It says 30 blood 
chilling stories from the weird fiction pulps. <laughs> and it's got a lot of good reading in it. And it's a wonderful uh, dust jacket on it. You can see that this vampire is, well, decked out as well, eh, Boris? He looks very elegant. Looks sort of like the vampire from tonight's feature a little bit. If you happen to uh, get a chance to peruse this one, I, I highly recommend it. Of course, this one here is called In the Shadow of the Vampire, and it's Reflections from the World of Anne Rice by Jana Marcus. And it's got wonderful loads of um, pictures from the vampire ball down in New Orleans that uh, Anne Rice uh, held and went to uh, years and years ago. And of course, we are so saddened to hear of her passing this past year. As so many have been taken away from us and we'd like to pay our respects for, for to uh, to Anne Rice for giving us all these wonderful stories and and uh, and more for the vampire world. Hmm. Now, last, of course, not least, is called Love at First Bite. Now, that's not the movie. This is actually the um, Complete Vampire Lover's Cookbook. <laughs> and, oh, well, well, here we are. First page. It's called the uh, Valentine's Italian Baked Fish. Mm-hmm. Didn't know vampires like fish, but I guess so. Why not? And especially if it's made with blood. <laughs> vampires love anything baked and made with blood. Mm. Wonderful ideas here. Wonderful uh, recipes. Uh, hmm. Sliced open-faced turkey sandwich. Huh. As long as they don't call it an open-faced buzzard sandwich, eh, Boris? <laughs> or instead of calling it a bat sandwich. Ooh, guess too close to home. <laughs> well, my dear fiends, you know, it's always great to learn about one's culture and heritage, especially through books that's been passed down through the ages and written for and by a, 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 uh, a sect such as vampires and other monsters, eh, Boris? <laughs> well, my dear fiends, let's get back to tonight's feature, The World of the Vampires. Thank you very much, and good night to you all. Thanks a lot, Mr. Coleman. I'll call you, Martha. That's fine. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, I ought to be in bed because I get up early, Rudolph. Good night, Martha. Good night, darling. Good night, dear. Anything wrong, Rudy? Not really. I think the girls were acting rather strangely. Strangely? Yes. Martha seemed a little scared, above all when he got here, the one who didn't like my music. Jealous, aren't you? Jealous? Of a man who dresses as if he were in a carnival? <laughs> well, forget the count. Get to sleep now. You know, I'm delighted that you could come and spend two or three weeks here at the house. So am I, Mr. Coleman. You'll sleep quite well in this country air. Thank you, I don't doubt it.
four hundred times not to enter without being called. Get out. Leonor, the time has come. I have chosen you, and tonight your body and your soul will be united with the dark shadows. Can you hear me calling? Yes, I hear you calling. I hear and I will go to you. Beyond the sight of men and all humanity, there are forces that lurk in the dark shadows that surround the earth. The dark magic that is only entrusted to a vampire is guiding you here. Come to me. Across the lonely night, the shadows cannot hurt you. Nothing has the power to stop you as you cross the open spaces. As you walk through the threatening shadows, I am here, my lord and master. Fate has written that you had to come to my side. The finger of destiny points to those that the knight has chosen. And you are one of the chosen ones. But you alone are not sufficient. You, together with the others, are destined to help me with my vengeance. All those who received the hated name of Coleman will now render tribute as they avenge the Sabotes. Yes, my lord. Many years ago, in Hungary, Count Sabote was able to unify the powers of the dark world. All was prepared a long time ago for that group of vampires to dominate humanity. But one man discovered his secret. Julius Coleman, a magician in Transylvania. Julius Coleman, he knew the mysteries that the alchemists knew, and he had learned how to read the language of the stars. He, he was the one who murdered my ancestor driving a long wooden stake into his heart. But the vengeance dictated by the dark masters was implacable. One and then another and the accursed family were destroyed until none were left. Nevertheless, there was one Coleman that escaped to America. And I, I now am charged with the mission of reconstructing the work of my ancestors. Only my hands are tied until the day when I punish the last descendant on earth until I erase that name. You know this Coleman, do you not? Yes, my uncle. Now, Kador's Kabbalah says that the last man bearing that hated name 
has to be destroyed during these nights. As for you and your sister Martha, my vengeance could not, could not be any more ironic. Two new high priestesses are going to join Kador sooner than the new moon reaches full growth. You must understand. Yes, my lord. I cannot oppose you. Servants of evil, obey the orders that I give you now. Come, you who are the predestined ones, to celebrate the great sacrifice. Tonight, you are to join the immortals. After that, your sister Martha, and I shall tie that man Coleman so that he may see as you and your sister join us and are made vampires. Uh -oh. Oh, Martha, did I wake you up? No, but I could hear you. I wasn't at all sleepy. I began to get a strong urge to play the piano again. You know, it's been a long time since I've played these lovely melodies. Schubert, Chopin. I'm glad you decided to do so. I found it very hard to sleep, too. So now I'd like to hear you play something. Oh, uh, fine, but only a short melody. I'd hate to waken the others at this hour. And you should be in there sleeping. Only a short melody.
Mother, you weren't listening. You were far away. That song you played earlier that sounded sort of alien. I recall you said that... That it scared away vampires? This one. you prefer to hear that song? I don't know. It's pretty hard to say. I suddenly had a tremendous urge to hear it. Right. Well, now, I guess you're satisfied, so it's off to bed you go. But try to sleep, won't you? See you tomorrow. Rudy. Yes? No, nothing. You're in the depths of hell. Pretty soon we'll look like those beasts there. No. Not he. I have other plans for him. Sabote. A plague on you. Be ready to die, Coleman. to Kabbalah. All the males are to die because their ancestors attacked us. The females are to join our world here, the world of the vampires. Only before the last Coleman is killed, he must sit and witness the whole ritual. You're completely crazy. Why? Because you are destined to pay the consequences just the way many other idiots did in your foul family to purge the crime committed in Hungary three centuries ago. <laughs> no, your moment to die has not arrived yet. Later, there is something you should see now. Now, tonight, one of you here who serves the god Kador had to bring a certain young girl to my lair. And unfortunately, you failed to bring her. In our world, there is no such thing as pardon. And we cannot tolerate failures. All the inhabitants know what the law is. To the stakes. To the stakes! Coleman, the 
descendant of Julius Coleman of Hungary and his foul lineage. Now you shall pay the consequences. Look! No! No! Leonard! What are you planning to do? Be immortal at my side the way all the others are. You are to carry out a mission for me. Exterminate the man who has started to meddle in my plans. Had he minded his own affairs, had he played another melody, I'd have made your sister into a priestess. It is late, so you must hurry. My time limit comes to an end tomorrow at midnight, the night of the full moon. Fly. As your fangs sink in, he will pay tribute to your glorious new existence. You know, my dear fiends, tonight's feature film is called The World of the Vampires. And I thought, well, since being a quarter vampire myself, I would bring out some of my uh, heritage and uh, artifacts 
of the vampire world. Uh, to the vampire, one of the main uh, features is having, well, a creation story, like everyone. And with the vampire story, it begins with Lilith. That's right, Lilith was said to have created, well, uh, pretty much all monsters, uh, starting with demons and uh, spirits that likened the akin to that, and of course the vampires evolved, and on and on and on, ghouls, etc., etc., etc. And Lilith here from the uh, Sumerian, I believe, days, don't quote me too closely, but you can look it up, it's called Lilith. Uh, with this particular rendition of her, she has the wings, she is uh, out with the beast, she is part beast, part human, and kind of like Pan. And she, uh, let me just hold it up and you can see right there, Lilith, creator of vampires, uh, the mother of vampires, as it's been said. And this is the, one of the oldest relics. Uh, found in history. And of course, later on, uh, modern artists have did their own rendition of Lilith, uh, as you can see. Uh, very beautiful in her bat-like uh, cape and bat-like structures here, uh, hiding seductively behind the uh, cape itself waiting for, well, victims to come along. <laughs> and this is just part of the vampire world that you can find out about. You know, go to the libraries, look it up online. Uh, come here to Gargoyle Manor by appointment and we'll tell you much, much, much more and many, many more things. <laughs> so let's get back to tonight's feature, World of the Vampire. Just a moment, Martha. Rudy, my uncle has disappeared and I can't find Leonore. Isn't she in her room? I called her name several times, she didn't answer. It seems that she locked her door, too. And I'm frightened to tell the truth. Let's take a look. Leonor? Leonor! Leonor! Something was screeching. No, you're just nervous. Now, where did your uncle and Leonore go? I searched the whole place and I sent the servants to the other houses to ask. No one's seen them, Rudy. You mean no one at all? I just told you. Just a minute. There was one house they didn't go to this morning. They didn't dare go and ask Count Sabote. No matter how much I persuaded them, they refused. They say the place is haunted. I'll go ask. But I'll put some clothes on first. Don't leave me alone one second, Rudolph. 
I'm really scared now. Right, we'd better hurry. You have your orders. You know what to do. Until nightfall. I'd like to see Count Sapote.
Martha! Martha? Martha! 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 Rudolph! Coleman. Coleman, are you around here? Rudolph! Rudolph! Coleman! Coleman, are you around here? This way! Hurry, man! Thank God you found us. I thought I was just about through, but hurry, you've got to be quick. I certainly hope we can make it on time. I want to die before you go. I don't want to turn into one of them. Kill me with a stake. I don't know. Last night he was still a man, now he's something else. And that hair, what happened to you? I don't know, I, I really can't explain it. I noticed it when I woke up this morning. I don't like it at all and I think I know what it is. What then? They attacked you and you're going through a slow transformation, the way he is. It's impossible to do anything. He's sleeping, you see they sleep during the day. No. Why, I would have felt the attack. When and why did they do it? Who? Who? Sabote. Sabote is a vampire. Come on, let's hurry and get out. Soon it's going to be too late, Rudy. Yourself. Don't go to sleep now, Rudolph. It's ten minutes to six. We have just about an hour to go before the sun begins to set. Thank you. 
Good evening, my dear fiends. Good evening. I just wanted to, well, show off my brand new outfit. <laughs> uh, we were talking about it a little earlier. Well, here it is. My new uh, vest and, of course, my new jacket with beautiful inlay trims and such things. Hmm? And uh, <laughs> kind of like a, a tuxedo type, type cut. My beautiful red a vest that uh, well go with any vampire or anything else type of ensemble. <laughs> I do hope you uh, like it. I I do love changing up the um, the, the attire every once in a while to to give a little bit more uh, well haunting look. <laughs> so thank you one and all and uh, well let us get back to tonight's feature shall we not <laughs> life here with many others. A life with real meaning. No! Don't touch me! No! 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 This is useless. Apparently there is no other way out. I don't feel so tired now. So I know that night is drawing near. What? Quiet. I hear something near. Like soft footsteps. No, it was nothing but a spider. Are you trying to say that you heard that spider crawling around? Yes. Suddenly I hear things that no other man can hear. Don't make me think it. You're wrong about it, sir. I'm not being changed into a... No. Oh. I can't see with so little light. Now I'm blind or near to it. I'm starting to hear things I couldn't hear. Very soon I'll not be able to speak. Within minutes I'll look exactly like he does. Before that can occur, we'll try anything, Coleman. Please understand, we'll try anything. There's time, it's 10 minutes to six. What did you say, Rudy? It's 10 minutes to six. What has happened? I looked at his watch a while ago and it was 10 minutes to six. It stopped, I guess. 
What time could it be? I have the faintest idea. It could be dark by now. Look there. Is that an exit? Either that or a dead end. She's dead. Another victim of that monster. Oh, my lord. We must find Leonore. Leonore. Leonore, you're here. I was sure that we'd never see you again, my dear. I was there when they put you on that big altar. Suppose they stood there with a knife held above you. That's about all I remember. Tell us what happened to you after that. I just remember a little. They began to run suddenly, and I was all alone then. And Sabote, show us that contemptuous dog. Now you will meet him. Standing there, my lord. Coleman, member of the accursed Coleman family. This is the hour of reckoning. Martha is ours. by music, sir.
You try to help out Martha. I've got to sit down to that organ. My hands, when his evil brain died down there on those stakes, this whole ghastly world perished in one fleeting second. And Leonore? Leonore, do you feel better now? I recall I had a blood-curdling dream. We're not in the house. You'll feel better pretty soon, dear. You're safe now. No. No! I need you! My master! I killed you.
We'll miss Leonore. I guess it was too late. She couldn't be saved. Let's get out of here right now. Accompany her to the house, please. I better let the police know. No, it's useless. This is so horrible. They ridicule us. Yes. I guess you're right at that. It's useless to tell them that we were taken to a world of vampires. My evilness, Boris, did you enjoy that film? As always, we enjoy each and every one of our films, especially uh, about the hierarchy of the vamp, uh, the monsters, which is vampires, witch, uh, ghoul, and, and, uh, and, and werewolf, of course. Can't forget the werewolf, no. <laughs> which makes, you know, if you got a quarter of each in you, like I do, you makes up to be 100% pure monster. <laughs> and I do try to be 100% pure monster. <laughs> well, my dear fiends, so glad you could make it for tonight's Tome of Terror with the vampire lore, and hope that you'll come back here next time for another chill, chilling, spine-tingling uh, film. <laughs> and perhaps I'll bring out some more items from the museum, hey, eh, Boris? Well, my dear friends, until next time, as always, keep screaming. <laughs> <laughs>